Hi, I'm Patricia Ruby Powell, and I'm the author of several books. What I'm going to be talking about today is Strutton with Some Barbecue. Lil Hardin Armstrong becomes the first lady of jazz. But I'm also the author of Josephine, The Dazzling Life of Josephine Baker, and Loving Versus Virginia, a documentary novel for young adult readers. And the book that comes out next is Lift As You Climb, the story of Ella Baker, which releases on June 9th this year, 2020. Strutton with some barbecue is the name of one of Lil Hardin Armstrong's tunes. It is published by Charles Bridge, and they've given me permission to read this, and it is illustrated by Rachel Himes. Lil Hardin Armstrong was the wife of Louis Armstrong. Now, most everybody has heard of Louis Armstrong, the great trumpet player, but Lil, his wife, was a fine jazz piano player. And there's not a lot of stories about Lil, which is why I thought I should write one. This is nonfiction, a biography, in verse, and it is a middle grade reader. I'm gonna read not the entire thing, but parts of it and tell you a little bit about the research that I've done on it. This is the title page. Isn't it interesting the way Rachel took the players up the page so your, your, your eye follows almost a complete circle? That's Louis Armstrong playing the trumpet down front. We call that downstage in the theater. And Lil playing the piano. So it begins with four chapters. Can you read what they are? We'll go through each one, so you'll see them as we go along. And there's a note to the reader, and at the end there's a glossary and a, you know, telling you some of the jazz words. There's some great words in here. But the first chapter is one verse, growing up in Memphis. Starting in 1898, time for my reading glasses. Yes, sir, Lillian Harden was proud to be who she was. Her mama made sure of that. Grandma made double sure. Grandma was a slave, a bought and sold slave. Till the Civil War ended and she was freed, free to earn wages, free to raise up her daughter, Dempsey, raised her up proud. Now, Mama and Grandma and Lil lived in Memphis, Tennessee, on wild, just off of wild Whalen Beale Street, where you got delicious ham, beans, greens, and barbecue, mm -hmm. but also blues music, juke joints, and pool halls. Yes, siree, all that whoopee worried mama. She had a daughter to raise up right. So here they are living on Beale Street. Lil was pretty much a prodigy. She was a fine organ player, which she played in the boarding house where they lived. And she took lessons from somebody at the church and she led the church choir and she'd improvise and astound everybody. She lost her way in a piece she was doing and she improvised. Her mom was so proud of her that she sent her to Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. Fisk University is still a university today, a university where the Jubilee singers made it famous. But Lil didn't like Fisk University. She came back to Beale Street and she bought St. Louis Blues, sheet music, the printed music on paper. And if you see the cover there, St. Louis Blues, that's exactly what the cover looked like, a piece by W.C. Handy. Her eyes fixed on the forbidden sheet music, St. Louis Blues, to be exact, popular on Beale Street, popular with colored folks, what folks called race music. Work of the devil, Mama would say, not fit for a lady. Never you mind. Lil brought that music, brought it home, and studied it. So Mama had had enough. Lil was just too wild. So they take the train up to Chicago, Choo-choo to cha-cha-choo. Lil and Mama rode the train to Chicago, sitting in the colored car, separate from white folks in those segregated times. I used little scat singings like choo-choo to cha-cha-choo because Louis Armstrong made scat songs, nonsense syllables, famous. So I used them throughout the book. 
Here's chapter two. Chorus, Hot Miss Lil, 1917 to 1919. Lil and Mama set down roots in the colored south side of town, the Black Belt, it was called. That's where practically all black folks lived, segregated from white folks. And one day, oh, that one day, stepping down South State Street, Lil passed a music store. She stopped. Looked once, looked twice in that display window at the forbidden, oh, so sinful, yes, sir, sheet music. So basically, Lil got a job playing music. They didn't have recordings, so she was demonstrating music at the store. And she was making $3 a week? A week, which wasn't much money even then, but it was something. And one day, into the store came Jelly Roll Morton. Up from New Orleans, sauntered into the store, his long, slender fingers hit the ivories hard, wailing on the piano, playing two rhythms at once, hitting the offbeat, that syncopated, oh yeah. Everybody danced and shouted, but nobody danced wilder than Lil, who near danced out her skin. After that, little old girl put every one of her 85 pounds to work, playing ferocious, playing syncopated, playing like jelly roll. So, Lil's cha playing changed, and she got a job playing with a band in town. There's pretty Miss Lil playing because she was really good. She was the only woman who was playing. Everybody else was a man, but she was fabulous. So the band that she was playing with went out to San Francisco from Chicago to play some tunes. But the band was playing on two and four, the New Orleans, the Chicago way. And San Francisco, those folks were, were accustomed to dancing on the one and the three. And so they flopped, they came home. So Lil and the band came home and her mama came to the site, the venue where Lil was playing. And her manager, Shaw, Mr. Shaw, flattered Mama and said, you've got to let her keep playing, even though Mother did not approve. Mother wanted her to be a classical pianist in the Fisk University way. But now Lil was making a whole lot more money. She was making $100 a week. $100 a week to play in his band, King Joe Oliver. So she gave notice at the Dreamland and joined King Oliver's Creole Jazz Band at the Royal Garden, another black and tan. She joined Joe Oliver because he was the king. A black and tan was a club in those days. They were in the big cities, and this is Chicago, where it was owned by blacks. The entertainment was by blacks, but white people came up and played. So that was very exciting. And then shortly after, we get to chapter three, Blowin', Enter Louis, that sweet Louis Armstrong, 1922. Shortly after that, King Oliver sent for young Louis Armstrong down in New Orleans, Dipper Mouth, they called him, because his mouth was wide as a water dipper, to play second trumpet behind the king's first trumpet. Yeah. Lil and Louis started going out on dates. He was really shy, and he was not as sophisticated as Lil was, but she got him to buy some new togs. That's clothes. That's one of the things you find in the glossary. And she got him a new haircut, and she spiffed him up. And what do you know? They were playing better and better together. Here they are playing the piano and the trumpet. That was their lives. They talked to each other in music the way many musicians do. And here's the audience, and this little scat bit is Glory Be. And so here they are, the best band in town, and we're gonna just go get to the next chapter, which is right here. 
whoop a doo doo We're getting to that, oh, this is a recording machine. We worked long and hard to find what a recording machine in the day looked like because I talk about the tin lily. So we had to find a picture of it so that Rachel could draw it, and that's what it looks like. So Lil and Louie get married. Hot Ensemble Out. To the top, baby, chapter four. They're playing in the top band in the world, which is in Chicago. There's new music. They would work on tunes out on their back step where they lived. And they penned jazz lips and skedat to do. And Lil insisted that Louie quit the band because he was still playing second to Joe Lewis, and he was better than Joe, not Joe Lewis, Joe, King Joe Oliver. And he did quit, it was scary, but he did. And he went out to New York and started playing and Lil wanted him back in Chicago. So she booked a new band and she made that banner, Madame Lil Armstrong's Dreamland Syncopators featuring Louis Armstrong, the world's greatest trumpet player which he was, but he was a shy guy and that sort of embarrassed him. And Lil got them some recording sessions. And here's that, that Tin Lily, the recording uh, device again, and Lil's piano and all the instruments, the trombone and the clarinet and the trumpet. And there's Johnny St. Cyr up on the ladder playing the banjo to get the mix right so it would sound right. So Lil was pushing his band along. They were in love. Pretty picture, playing together. Lil wrote, strutting with some barbecue, which is also the name of this tune and one of her tunes. And here is Pretty Lil at the end. And it starts with, with them before they're born or before Louis's born and then Lil gets born and it ends with them on the top of the world. Strutting with some barbecue. Now, the research of this book was a little bit challenging, whereas Josephine Baker wrote five autobiographies, it was easy to find information about her. Louis Armstrong died in the early 70s. Now, they were no longer married. Lil never remarried, but Louis married a couple of times. And uh, he died in July. And Lil was playing a commemorative concert for him in Grant Park a month later. And playing this concert, she collapsed at the piano. She was taken to the hospital and she never recovered. People went to her house to collect her effects, her documents and her photos. And the five chapters of an autobiography that people knew that she had started, and they were gone. Her apartment had been ransacked and nobody has found them, at least I haven't found them, I haven't found the person who has found them, they're just lost. But Lil Hardin Armstrong did do some um, interviews, one with Studs Terkel and one's with Chris Albertson, and both of those she talked about her early childhood and her, her whole life, and so that was a Great, those two interviews were great sources for her life. But there's a complete bibliography in the back. This is strutting with some barbecue. Lil Hardin Armstrong becomes the first lady of jazz. And you wanna know, I named my doggy after Lil. Her name is Lil, my hound dog, my tree walking hound. Thanks so much, enjoy the book, bye-bye.